Uh, also, you know, I just saw my next guest uh, about last week on, on TV talking about the market melt up. It was interesting, though. He was on a panel with some uh, uh, more seasoned uh, professionals, and he went the other way than they did. I'm going to bring in the president of Payne Capital Management, Ryan Payne. Uh, I'm not affiliated with the firm, by the way. So I'm watching the show, Ryan, and, um, you know, you're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a melt up, but you were digging it. They were saying it's a melt up as red flag, danger, danger, get out now. You were like, no, it's a, it's a melt up. <laughs> But go for the ride. I mean, you still feel that way? Absolutely, Charles. What do you mean seasoned uh, people in the industry? Come on, man. I got 20 <laughs> years under my belt. I've got the scars on my back to prove it. Those dudes you were uh, on with, uh, you know, you, you uh, believe me, they've been around for about 40, 50 years. So you're, you've been in the business. I'm not dissing you. I'm just saying that they've been around a little bit longer than you. And you, you, I don't know if youth had something that the youthful exuberance had anything to do with influencing your position. But you do want to ride this up. By the way. Uh, I'm reading Zero Heads this morning, right? And they're saying Goldman is pumped, too. They, they, they say there's all kinds of euphoria, uh, uh, euphoria out there. $90 billion, they say, will go into the market this week alone. So, yeah, we ride those waves, but on the street, they think that's a negative. Aren't, are you contrarian, contrarian at all? Yeah, I think, the, I think the contrarian view still is bullish, right? If you look at the average consensus of a strategist on Wall Street, their target for the S&P 500, Charles, is 4,600. That's like less than a percent away. They just pack it in for the rest of the year and wait after that. Um, so I think, you know, right now the consensus is still relatively bearish. And you just said it. I mean, it's all about liquidity right now. And I think the Fed's kind of artificially created this, right? They started buying all those long data bonds. You know, you have a very, very flat yield curve right now. So banks don't want to lend. They're not making a lot of money on their margins. So you've got all this money in the system and it's got to go somewhere. Right. So it's the proverbial Tina trade. There is no alternative. Right. And there really isn't right now. Right. You're getting you know, the return on stocks, you got stock buybacks, you got dividends going up this year. Um, and the stock market obviously has done phenomenally well. If you're sitting in cash earning nothing. Inflation's four or five percent. You've got to get a return on money. And that's that phenomenon you're going to continue to see here. Money's going to continue to funnel its way into the financial markets. That's why everybody's been wrong. So this year, though, we have also had this intriguing phenomena of rolling pullbacks in individual sectors. In the S&P, uh, I think the average stock has pulled back like 18 percent from the high. It's been really a lot worse. And then Nasdaq, I think 38 percent. Russell, about 35 percent. So even with all of this excitement and the broad market hitting new highs, you can't just throw a dart, though, right? I mean, you still how do you stay ahead of the crowd here, Ryan? <laughs> I know some days you feel like you could just throw a dart, but I, I, you, you've got a good point here, Charles, especially tech stocks have been very sensitive this year to what's going on with inflation, right? We saw a big sell off in tech stocks when we had the 10 year Treasury move up big in the last month. Uh, you saw that earlier in the year around March, the same thing when the te you know, 10 years at 1.7 percent. So the one thing I've talked about on your show a lot for the last 12 months is that cyclical trade. And Ed just said on the last segment, you know, financials and energy have been king here. Cyclicals have done the best. And the other thing I would say about that is they're so cheap versus technology right now. So that has a long runway, energy stocks, financial, cyclicals. And I, I espouse the, the uh, international markets on your show, Charles. I know they haven't done as well yet, but they're so cheap. You have to have them in your portfolio. So I think you've got to be careful of valuation because the music does stop. Eventually it will. It's those higher valuation stocks that are going to get hurt the most. We saw that back in 2000, right. the tech bubble burst. All right, Ryan. You covered a lot of ground, my man. Good stuff. We appreciate it. And, uh, Ryan, you, you, you're not a young whippersnapper, but you're not as old as some of these other dudes. All right. Uh, I'll take it, Charles. Right, I'll cool, take it from one cool. peak to another. And